All right, today is the day and it is Erite Friday. We have been doing a bunch of laminations on the tub and I'm not gonna be showing those to you, at least not independently, each um, different surface as I have been doing in the past, trying to explain some of the things behind uh, how that is getting done or why it is getting done in the way it is. But anyway, we'll be putting those together in a big compilation to catch you up to speed once we get the tub um, shooting for being able to have the front and rear firewalls finished on the outside lamination so that we can get holes drilled in it, get the subframes bolted on. That's going to be the big holdup to uh, keep us moving on to lots of other more interesting things. But anyway, when that full lamination video, I will compile it all together into a larger group. And that'll be probably one more last video in the laminations department on the tub. But as you can see, it is sitting here on its nose, working on the rear firewall, getting to the point that I'm talking about. But today, I'm going to uh, give you part two of building that rear hub, um, getting some suspension pieces built. Um, I will be showing you the other hubs, of course, coming up in the near future. Of course, we won't show you the opposite side of the rear hubs because it's just a mere image of today's work. But let's jump in, take a look at today, rear hub, part two. Now this first part here is just a kind of a quick recap just to get people familiar if they have not seen the first video to see what they're about to see in part two here. But I will certainly put a card at the end of this video and one in the, the link in the description to link you back to part one video where you can go watch the full assembly here that we're just rushing through as a brief introduction. So for right now, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about the function of this hub. Now this thing is based around some components that come from Corvette. Because I started out with the Corvette, the Gertag differentials. And so since I'm using that differential out of a Corvette, it's very easy for me to take the axles, which are got the correct splines. And once you got the axles coming out, use the bearings as well. And these bearings, of course, are both on three bolts, so that's what this hub is doing, is adapting for that bearing and the other components we're going to need to connect the bearing to this suspension and have our drivetrain that way. So the bottom part, the bottom A-arm, is uh, connected with four points to keep this thing from having any kind of rotation, which would change our toe on the move. But we will also be uh, fixing that because the top mounting point is a ball joint that can't could pivot if it wasn't for the four point connection on the bottom of this hub. And you'll see that as I assemble this and put this into the suspension at the end of this video. So here we're just kind of uh, finishing up what was, as I said, the previous video part one of building this hub. Now I got in the middle of this thing and I've started having some problems with my welder. In the MIG, it was the wire was just not feeding, feeding very erratically, and a lot of things I tried could not fix it. So I've been using TIG, and then of course I started having TIG problems. I had a leak and was losing argon, and instead of just buying a new torch, I ended up buying a new welder. And so now as we're wrapping up this first part, we're gonna jump in, and the first thing we're gonna do is get into using that new welder. So there are a lot of welds that need to occur that are a lot longer and things it might not want to do with a TIG welder. These long welds are basically welding this ring into this six inch piece of pipe. So we got a really good ground, a good bevel, so I can get some good penetration. I'm gonna run some long welds around the pipe and the ring to weld it from the front. I'm also gonna flip it over, weld it from the back and then the, basically the hub is built out of, or based around this uh, ring and uh, two piece of tubing where all the bearing bolts on and creating a box structure to stiffen the whole thing up, make something very rigid so that there is no flex in the bearing connection to the suspension. So like I said, gone round, welded this thing front and back and onto the box structure we built around it. Now that bearing has to have a nice flat surface, so I'm gonna grind that weld down that we just did. Like I said, nice good penetration through that groove. We do need to grind it down, get really close so we don't get too far into it. We want to keep it nice, perfectly level. And also the surface for the brake caliper needs to be ground flush. And one of the last things we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of a horn on here. This is really similar to the steering knuckle that would go onto the front hub. But this is going to be used to add a, an independent link on the top so that this thing cannot um, pivot 
against the bushings below and cause any toe movement while you're traveling. So bottom part of the horn, and then I put a little bend in the top piece. Then I'm going to put the spherical rod end, the link that will go and create that toe adjustment. Bolt it into place so that I get that alignment just right on where that link's going to hook up. And then I can get that piece of metal right up against the hub itself. And I'll go ahead and weld that on. And then a little bit of a skip here because I didn't catch some video, but I did put another piece on the back side of that horn. And then a couple of more bolts for the emergency brake. Once I was done, sandblast it, take it out, put some powder coating on it, and then bring it in and put it in my little oven that I use for doing some powder coating of some small components. And this thing of just about max capacity for my little oven. Try to extract my board that I carry it in without bumping any of that powder. Get that thing balanced on a couple little pegs in there. And we'll pour the heat on now and uh, get our powder to uh, fuse onto this thing. And voila, there it is. The beautiful black diamond that I'm using on these suspension components. That's cooled off, ready to assemble it. Now here is the bearing from a Corvette. Three fairly substantial bolts go through the ring in the back. We'll tighten that thing up. This is all kind of a, just a trial run. I'll of course put some uh, Loctite on some of these and some other things to make sure that this thing holds together, but we're going to get a trial fit on everything. And once we get our bearing in place, we can now uh, drop our brake caliper on. The caliper itself is also from Corvette, but the brake rotor, the, I should say the rotor is from a Corvette, but the calipers are not. They're Brembo off of a Porsche. And I love these, uh, Brembo brake calipers because I love the surface mount rather than uh, the little bracket type mounting system. Same thing, bolt those on. I need, need to find some new uh, cap end bolts to go on there that they can't find those locally. You gotta order those in. And here you'll see what I mean. This uh, long eight inch bolt is gonna go through one set of uh, rod end urethane bushings through the length of the bottom of the hub through the other urethane rod end. Then I'll swing up, go into the ball joint on the top. Like I said, all depending on how stiff your urethane is, how much uh, movement you'll have and uh, this thing get forced into toe in and out when it's moving. But this uh, link here should be able to stop that. And there it is. In all of its beauty, getting exciting to have these done.